What's up, Guiding Bolt fans? This is Nick, and today we're going to be taking a look at a set of D&D &D miniatures. This is the set that released in December of 2019, and it is uh, from WizKids. This is Volos and Morden Cannon's Foes. Um, what we're going to be doing today is something a little different than my typical unboxings. So the story goes... My son wanted a brick of miniatures for his birthday, uh, but he didn't want to do the unboxing video and still wanted to open them himself. So what I'm going to do instead here is I'm just going to show you what we got. Uh, we'll go through each of the commons, uncommons, and rares. You can see I still have them broken down into sections here. Up on the top, this is the commons section, 1 through 13. Uh, this is the uncommon section from 14 to 32, and then down here on the bottom is the rares from 33 to 44. Uh, the total breakdown for this set is 13 commons, um, 19 uncommons, there's 21 if you count the two variants, and then there's 12 rares. Uh, so altogether there's 44 in this set. Now there is an additional... Um, miniature in this set that is the elder brain also comes with stalagmites and that's kind of the uh the premium miniature or uh sometimes they call it the case incentive uh, I, do, I don't have that unfortunately because we only got a brick we didn't actually get a full case a brick contains uh, eight boxes each of the boxes has four miniatures in it so you end up with uh 32 miniatures in total by the uh by the time you're done and uh what i'm going to do is i'm also going to give a I'm going to go over the ones that I missed for the commons and uncommons and tell you what the price of those are. So in case you decided that you wanted to pick them up individually, I'm not going to tell you the prices of the ones I did get. Um, but I'll give you the prices for the ones that I'm missing. I think in total for uh, $24 and some change, I could pick up the uh, all of the ones that, I, that we missed out on, uh, again with the exception of the rares. Uh, and the cool thing that we're going to do here is I'm actually going to give you a little snippet of lore for each one of the monsters since we're not going through an unboxing. So let's go ahead and uh, jump in. First up on the list is the Bodak. This here is a Bodak. This is number 1 of 44. And uh, I'm just going to point out real quick that they used the white lettering on these, which I love it when they do this because I can actually read it. When they use just the black lettering, that's... Um, I, I, I can never tell what <laughs> what it is without uh, holding it right up to my uh, face. So anyways, this is a Bodak, and these uh, Bodaks are created, or they're the undead remains of someone who revered Orcus. So that's how Bodaks come, to, come into uh, existence. And we did get two of these. Um, that's one of the uh, one of the ones that, got, that we got a duplicate of. I think all in all we only got three duplicates out of the entire brick, so not too bad. Next up is a uh, Darrow. Now, all Darrow suffer from a form of madness or a, a tick that they have. So they usually have something that's not quite right in the head, which is uh, makes them kind of interesting uh, NPCs to play. And if you check out uh, page 159 of Morden Caden's Foes, you can uh, get a list of that. Um, some examples, or the funniest one that I saw was uh, they'll walk backwards whenever possible. You can see that I have uh, over here on the left Morden Caden's Tomb of Foes. That's where you'll find more information on the Darrow, as well as the uh, the list of um, madness effects that they uh, suffer from. And I should point out that all of these miniatures are in either uh, Morden Caden's Tomb of Foes or Volo's Guide to Monsters. That's where you can find the uh, stat blocks and information on all of these if you want additional lore. We're not going to give actually a piece of lore for this guy because this is just a uh, straight up uh, knoll. 3 of 44, um, you probably know more than you need to know about Knowles already. This is a really cool looking miniature though. He's got uh, some sweet chain mail on, just a big old bow. Did a really good job on the paint on this guy. So this is a pretty impressive miniature. I really like that guy. Number four, this is a uh, Chatine. Um, when you encounter a group of these, I like to call it shitty ness because they're shitines and if you can see here c-h-i-t-i -I, and then any so i like to uh joke and call it shittiness when you encounter a group of these because <laughs> they're pretty vicious little things uh these are created by drow or they were originally created by drow uh, by subjecting prisoners to horrible rituals and i believe originally they were elves that they um 
subjected the rituals to, uh, but I think they can be uh, pretty much made from any, uh, any race. This, even though it is just an orc, the cool thing about this one, I think this, this is the only one that I've seen or remember seeing, but this is a female orc here. And this is number five of 44. This is the orc claw of Luthic. And uh, <clears throat> basically Luthic is uh, Grumish's wife, if you follow, follow the lore. And uh, these specific orcs can use, uh, they're very adept with magic, so they can heal, cast protection spells, and even, uh, even curse enemies. And you can see this is another really good looking miniature. Uh, she's got some tattoos on, on her arm. You can look, looks like she has like a mohawk and her hair is kind of like flowing in the wind. So a pretty cool looking miniature. Unfortunately, we missed number six. That is a turtle. And the cheapest I could find it online was um, $3.29. And that was on trollandtoad.com. So check out, uh, you can buy individual miniatures there. Check out that website if you're looking to pick up a few to uh, fill out your collection. Number seven, this is a Iron Cobra. And iron cobras were uh, typically crafted by gnomes. And in addition to um, their poisonous, poisonous bites, they can also deliver other effects like paranoia or paralysis. So you can, basically their fangs can be filled with any, uh, any nasty substance you can think of. And uh, you can use that to inject it into your, uh, to your PCs. So that's an iron cobra number seven of 44. This next guy is pretty mean, hence the name. This is a mean lock, number eight of 44. And these guys are pretty cool. They are actually spawned by fear. Um, whenever fear overwhelms a creature in the Fey Wild, one or more of these arise in the shadows nearby. So kind of a cool little, uh, cool little monster. Uh, number nine we missed out on, that is a Woodwode, $2.09 is the cheapest that I could find that online, again uh, at uh, Troll and Toad. Number 10, this is a Cave Fisher, another good looking miniature, it's all white, number 10 of 44, uh, with the exception of his uh, black beady eyes, and um, uh, Cave Fishers, uh, nearly every part of the Cave Fisher has a use. Um, the coolest thing that I uh, wanted to mention here is that its blood is alcoholic and tastes like liquor. So there's a lot of uses if, um, if your uh, party is going through the Underdark and they uh, are low on resources, uh, tracking down one of these might be a, uh, might be a lifesaver. Number 11 of 44 is a Corrid. And these guys are pretty slick. These are like the uh, the treasure golems of D and D, right? So if you've ever played uh, Diablo, this is like your little treasure goblin here. Uh, they have magical hair, and their hair will turn into whatever material material was used to cut it. So if you're low on funds and you're traveling through the Underdark, try to find one of these little guys. They don't uh, they don't necessarily like having their hair cut without their permission, but uh, it is an option to get some uh, some gold quick. <laughs> Um, number 12 is a choker. We did get two of these and uh, chokers are made up primarily, or actually I think um, mostly, probably 100% uh, of cartilage. They, they don't have a skeleton and that allows them to uh, hide their bodies in crevices and uh, typically what will happen is they'll, since they're kind of uh, little monsters, they'll hide in a crevice and they'll have something outside of the uh, crevice to kind of lure in enemies and then what they'll do is they'll reach their long arms out and try to choke the victim. So that's what they, uh, that's kind of their ambush tactic I guess. Number 13, this is a measle I think, yeah measle, uh, 13 of 44. Um, this is, uh, you'll see here that we got another measle. We actually got a common and an uncommon. They look a little bit different. One of them has a, the other one has a garrot um, to, to strangle people with, where this guy just has a, uh, just a bladed weapon. And uh, measles pull their victims through shadows, cursing them. 
and then all undead and Shadowfell creatures can sense the uh, character that they transported. So if you uh, encounter a measle, make sure it doesn't get you and shadow teleport you, otherwise you're going to be dealing with other, uh, other nasty creatures for a little while until that wears off. So he looks pretty cool. He's got a little bit of a lean to him. I'll have to uh, put him in some warm water and straighten him out, but still a pretty good looking miniature. 14, this is another Darrow. This is 14 of 44. This guy has a crossbow. This is our uncommon Darrow. You can see here there's the common Darrow, so they're uh, a little bit different. One's got a crossbow, the other one's got a hooked weapon to, and uh, looks like a rope on it to kind of reel in enemies. 15, that would have been a Noel pack leader, $3.99 to pick him up. And 16, couldn't get any tortles apparently. Uh, that is a tortle druid and $2.99 was the cheapest on that guy. Here is the other measle. You can see there that he's got a, uh, it's either a rope or a wire that he's holding in his hands. Put him up next to the other one here just so you can see him. They, so pretty much identical with the exception of their, uh, of their weapons. 18, this is a, uh, is this a spring aladrin? Yes, spring aladrin, number 18 of 44. And you'll see that we got a couple, uh, a few other aladrins in this, uh, in this set. And the cool thing about aladrins is they change their form based on their emotional state. So, uh, in, if you're playing one of these, or if you're playing one as an NPC, I guess, after a long rest, you can change. And there's winter, summer, spring, and autumn. Um, if, if the Eladrin is sad, they'll t turn into a winter uh, Eladrin. If they're angry, they turn into a summer Eladrin. Uh, this guy is feeling uh, joy or joyful because he's a spring one. And then uh, if they're feeling uh, goodwill, they'll turn into an autumn Eladrin. And actually, put that's uh, next one up, I think, is an autumn Eladrin. Yep, number 19. So this is the autumn Eladrin. And you'll see here, when we get towards the end, there is a rare that we got as well, which is the winter. This nasty looking thing, uh, number 20 of 44 is a Choldrith. And uh, <clears throat> these, are cr these were created by Loth to punish Drow for not dedicating her, their creation of Shatines to her. So if you remember this guy right here, this guy created by the Drow and Loth was uh, kind of like watching in, I guess, as they were creating these and she expected them to dedicate them to her, but they never did. So as a uh, punishment, she created this guy um, to basically uh, <clears throat> kind of, uh, uh, well, how would you say it? Uh, basically, these these things free these little guys, and they kind of cause like an uprising. If you want to read more about that, check out the uh, check out one of the uh, the books here. I forget which one they're in. But uh, at first, the drow were kind of excited when this thing uh, when they spawned one of these because it could lay eggs that would make more of these. Um, the only downside was, of course, is that these things were uh, ended up turning against the drow. Number 21. Well, you can see here, this is a, uh, there's two variants in this set, if I didn't mention that. You can see this is 21B of 44, and we actually got the cooler of the two miniatures, in my opinion. So uh, this is a Skull Lord. Uh, and he's got like this uh, blue flame kind of erupting from his palm. The other Skull Lord is just a, uh, he's just kind of sitting there with his hand up like this, so ready to cast something. So we, we got the cooler of the, uh, of the two. And uh, Skull Lords were originally created by Vecna after um, the vampire Cass betrayed him. Vecna, what he did is gathered all of his generals and bound them into groups of three so that they'd spend eternity fighting with each other. This ugly looking thing is a Mar Marazi, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, number 22 of 44, and uh, it's a demon. Um, when one of these consumes a corpse, which takes roughly 10 minutes, it assumes the appearance of the body that it consumed. So it can temporarily take the uh, form of whatever it eats. The only problem is, is after time, the body will begin to, to, to decay, uh, revealing its true form again. Uh, 23, that was a Shadow Dancer, $2.97. Number 24 is a Shadow Mastiff. Um, the Shadow Mastiff has the ability to see creatures and objects on the ethereal plane. So that's the 
cool, cool thing about those guys. In addition to it, just looks mean. Check that guy out. Little sh wisps of shadows kind of coming off its back and legs. Good looking miniature. Number 25, this is a Bander Hob. And uh, Bander Hobs were originally created by hags. Uh, so if you run into a hag, they may actually be able to uh, teach one of your PCs the ritual should you want to uh, create one of these. That's number 25 of 44. And that is the uh, first large uncommon in the set. This guy hiding behind the ogre. This is a uh, bar guest, number 26 of 44. And uh, bar guests were born, they're born to goblin parents, but they have a secret mission. And that mission is to devour the souls of 17 goblins. And they don't just go after like the... Uh, the the grunts they try to take out uh important um in, important goblins within the tribe so uh if the uh if the goblins get a uh hint or they suspect that there is a bar guest within their um within their ranks it kind of throws them into a frenzy as they try to figure out who it is that's number 26. 27 um really sad that we didn't get this guy both me and uh, my son were disappointed this is bone claw um, and that's the probably the most expensive uncommon of the set. $8.79 is the price to pick him up. 28, this is a uh, Lacrata, number 28 of 44. And uh, Lacrata, the cool thing about them is they can duplicate the call or vocal expression of just about any creature that they hear. So they can uh, <clears throat> basically lure, lure other uh um, PCs or uh, other beasts in uh, by mimicking uh, mimicking another animal or a person. That's number 28. Number 29 is the Steel Predator. And uh, Steel Predators can uh, they're created by a Hexton uh, in Sigil. And uh, if you want to create one of these, what you need to do is bring a um, basically something from your target. So uh, possibly like a lock of hair just as an example and then when this is created it's bound with that lock of hair and then what the steel predator will, will do is it's basically its mission in life is to search and destroy or search out and uh, kill whoever uh, the target is so kind of a nasty looking uh, nasty looking beast you don't want one of these tracking you down next up we have a venom troll this is number 30 of 44 and uh, venom trolls are uh, mutated by massive amounts of poison and they're very dangerous in close quarter combat because they're basically their skin is just covered with uh, dripping venom and poison and uh, it, when they're injured or hurt it may spray off onto the uh, onto the PCs doing additional damage. Number 31 is a trapper, and uh, trappers can blend in with pretty much any surface. So um, if, it's, uh, if it's stone, earth, wood, um, they can pretty much blend in with it. What they do is they just lay flat, and then uh, when an unsuspecting vic victim steps on them, they uh, just kind of roll up, uh, almost like a rug of smothering, and kind of strangle or suffocate the victim. Number 32 of 44, uh, you can see here that this is a variant, this is 32A, and uh, again I think we lucked out and got the better of the two miniatures. The other one is a Bolt Lancer, so he's got a massive crossbow, but when I picture an ogre, I uh, this is what I picture, right? Just this brute carrying, uh, looks like he's got a half a tree there, gonna smash down a door so the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the troops can get in and uh, slay their enemies. So I'm glad that we got this one as opposed to the uh, to the Lancer. And that is it for the uncommons. Uh, last but not least here is our three rares. And um, typically we get between three to four uh, rares per brick. That seems to be pretty common um, from the other unboxings that I've done. If you want to... Uh, to fill out the rare section, uh, if you're looking at purchasing a full case, um, I've heard, I haven't actually done this myself, but I've heard that you pretty much get every one of the rares if you do that, and they kind of have them 
um, arranged in the case, right? So you would get most of these and don't get a lot of duplicates. Obviously, you're going to get a lot of duplicates for both the uh, commons and uncommons, but uh, you get a good chance of getting all of the rares if you purchase a case. Plus, you get the case incentive, so which is uh, in this set would be the Elder Brain. So number 38 of 44, this is the Winter Eladrin, and you can see this... Uh, it's pretty impressive looking miniature. The cape has kind of like a metallic sheen to it. Um, and then the front, uh, our armor has got a bunch of little ruins and markings on it. So pretty good looking miniature. Number 39 of 44. Uh, this is a blue Abishai. And uh, there's multiple of these. There's a uh, red, green, black, and probably missing, uh, missing a few others. But uh, each one of these were once a mortal who somehow won Tiamat's favor before death. And uh, the blue one is, uh, they're the most adept spellcasters. So if you look at their stat block, they have a uh, pretty nice arsenal of spells at their disposal. And this is just a really good looking miniature as well. I really like the uh, yellow with the blue. It really just kind of makes his wings pop. I'll have to straighten out the staff a little bit, but super happy with this miniature. And then he's got like this, uh, not sure what spell it is, but he's got like a bunch of uh, blue kind of like sparkling uh, or crackling energy kind of like arching out from his hand down to the ground. So it looks pretty cool. And last but not least is this guy. This is a Eidolon Possessed Sacred Statue. And uh, Eidolons are forged from the souls of those who proved their unwavering devotion to gods. So uh, what happens is, is an Eidolon is created, and usually they're set to uh, watch over some, uh, like a vault or a, a shrine or a crypt or something to that nature. And there's usually a vessel for them. So you can see here, the vessel in this case would be this massive statue. And then when somebody intrudes, the Eidolon uh, goes into the vessel and tries to scare off or kill the, uh, the intruder. So pretty good, uh, pretty good looking miniature. And that is it. So uh, I hope you like this format. If you uh, prefer this format over the typical unboxing, uh, let me know down in the uh, in the comments, or maybe you'd like to see an unboxing and me also do a, uh, a little snippet lore video. I would be happy to do that as well. Just let me know, like I said, down in the comments. Please consider liking uh, or commenting. And uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, do remember to subscribe. We put out weekly content, whether it's lore, unboxings, review, uh, etc. So um, if you don't want to miss out on what we're up to, go ahead and uh, hammer that subscribe button. Otherwise, uh, as always, thanks for watching and until next time.